Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about the Barebones ESP8266, how to work with it, what are uh, its features, and why even consider working with one. This video is targeted uh, to people who, who are familiar with ESP8266, maybe worked with the development board like a Node MCU, people who are familiar with Arduinos and microcontrollers in general but maybe didn't hear about the 8266. Anyway, so let's get into it. First, what is an ESP8266? It's a microcontroller. Uh, a microcontroller is, as you all know, is the uh, the brain. Like, it's a bad analogy. Like, they don't exactly work like our brains, uh, humans. But it's usually the one that gets uh, understood uh, the most easily. So they are like the brains in any intelligent device or gadget. Anyway. What's so impressive about the SP8266 and why I consider it one of my favorite microcontrollers and basically I'd go for it in any, uh, not any, but most of my projects is it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth already built into it, like no external hardware needed, like uh, in the case of Arduinos, a popular choice for uh, integrating Bluetooth into any application is the CH05 uh, Bluetooth module. You don't need any of that. It comes right uh, built into it like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Bluetooth both classic and BLE, which is which stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. Anyway, it's clocked at 80 megahertz and up to 160 megahertz. That's huge. Like for reference, uh, an Arduino is clocked at 16 megahertz, and this is at its base at its base clock. It's 80 megahertz, so that's huge. That's more than enough computation for so many tasks. Plus, what's very mind-boggling and like so impressive about it is that it comes with four megabytes of flash memory, with this with the whole file system in it. Like you can store files and manipulate them in, a, in an ESP8266. I've already used this uh, feature so many times, and one of them is in my ultra low power uh, uh, temperature logging IoT node. You can check that uh, that out in in the description. I'll leave the link to that uh, project, and you might like watch the video explaining a bit that project. I made a video about it. Anyway. It runs Artos, the real-time operating system. I'm not gonna go into details about real-time operating system because it's mostly hidden in the uh, Arduino core, like implemented Arduino core that makes it coming to our last point, Arduino IDE compatible. But you can check out Artos if, uh, if you're interested or if you need like a microcontroller uh, that uh, supports Artos and you wanna work with it, here you are, like you can work with the uh, ESP8266 with Artos. So, coming to our uh, main question here, why use a bare bones one? Here I have at my right, I have the uh, Node MCU development board. It has a bare bones one attached to it, but with a breakout board and with uh, with a PCB and so many other components. And we'll discuss why you might. Uh, consider using a bare bones uh, microcontroller as the SP8266. So here in this uh, picture, I have, as you can see, the most and first thing to consider when working with the bare bones, or the first reason why why you you'd consider working with the bare bones one, is size. The uh, the bare bones one is like three fourths. Uh, one fourth of the size of the uh, of the PCB. Like that's huge uh, space saving. Like when you're working on a wearable that uh, that needs Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, like smartwatch or something. Uh, putting a, a whole development board on it is kind of impossible. So going with a bare bones one would be the ultimate solution there. Uh, that set aside. When you're trying to work on uh, on an ultra low power project 
like one that's battery powered and say you're constrained in, in size in an IT node like that's very limited in size so you can't put any bigger batteries than the smallest one in the market that have very low capacity and you need to save as much power as possible here the 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 chip that's uh, that's in the red box which is USB to a USB to serial converter that's used to program the microcontroller the ESP266 the problem is when development when developing yeah we need that uh, we're switching code we're fixing bug bugs we're testing and everything so we need the USB to serial converter but once we deploy our project and we're we're left with an enclosure that's closed that has the final code hopefully the final version of our code and everything we no longer need that usb to serial converter the problem is that usb to serial converter that chip still consumes power even when you're when not used and and that consumption is as i said when when we're constrained in the uh, in the capacity of the battery or just want to save power that's an extra load on our battery that we that we literally don't not using like that's just sitting there consuming power so that's a problem to uh, that's one of the of the other reasons why you would you'd use the bare bones microcontrollers also the LDO what's an LDO an LDO is a low dropout uh, linear uh, voltage regulator so what's a dropout I hear you ask Good question. A dropout voltage for a, for a voltage regulator. Let me give you an example. So, say you have 5 volts at our input for our voltage regulator. And our voltage regulator have a dropout voltage of 1 volt. That means the output of that power, uh, voltage regulator would be at its maximum 4 volts. If our input is 5 volts, at maximum, we'd have 4 volts at, at, at its output. Say we have 4.5 volts at, it, at the input, at the maximum output would be 3.5. So, the drop, uh, each, uh, each uh, voltage regulator has its dropout voltage. And that matters when we have uh, battery uh, power constrained uh, projects. So, why you'd care about the uh, the LDO that's used that's used in the uh, node MCU? First of all, it's called an LDO, so low dropout voltage. The IMS, uh, the AMS eleven seventeen, has a dropout voltage of around three hundred millivolts. That's for most cases that's very low. That's very good uh, dropout voltage, but in some specific cases, that's a lot of energy to lose. So we end up needing uh, a more efficient uh, low dropout voltage regulator. Anyway, so uh, these are some reasons. Another reason would be customizability in form. Like you don't need uh, this form. You need like a square form, let's say, or a circular form. So you design your own uh, development board and you, you, you use whatever you want. Anyway, so these are some of the reasons you'd use a bare bones microcontroller. And this is not only like a case for the SP8266. The Arduino, for example, uses the same behavior. The Arduino uh, Uno, let's say, is uh, is development board made for hobbyists and uh, uh, newbies for the uh, to the electronics community. And it has on it an 80 mega 328B. The 80 mega 328B is a microcontroller, is a bare bones one, bare bones one, and it's just soldered on a breakout board that makes it easier to interact with it and program it and use it. So this is not the only case for the uh, a case only for the ESP266. You can consider using a bare bones uh, microcontroller for basically all microcontrollers out there. Anyway, so how to solder it, like. To use the ESP8266 microcontroller, you need to solder it. And as you can see, 
uh, from the picture on the left. This is my microcontroller when I bought it. Like it's very tiny, it's very small, and it, it comes with no wires attached to it, which makes it uh, hard to program and use. So uh, basically, after after wiring uh, after soldering some wires to it, I have this uh, uh, spider-looking uh, microcontroller uh, on my table, but. I wish I had this, uh, the idea, uh, I came up with the idea of this uh, wiring. I wish I'd came up with it, but I didn't, so a link to the tutorial on uh, how I got inspired for, for the wiring of this microcontroller down below, but it's so easy guys, like I cut some wires and soldered them in place and I got this freaky uh, spider on my table, ready to use. but. We have some concerns. First of all, we need to figure out the, uh, uh, like, on the development board you have all the uh, pinouts printed for you and everything, but here we're working with, with the bare bones microcontroller, so it's not that easy to recognize all the pins. Luckily, uh, the guys at Random Nerd Tutorials uh, provided us with this uh, very very beautiful and explore, uh, explanatory uh, playlist on the ESP8266. It's not a playlist. It's actually a blog list. Like they went into so many details on the uh, ESP8266 on the like so many aspects of uh, working with it. So I really recommend uh, checking it out. Otherwise, I came up with I came. Uh, I brought the picture of the uh, wiring from their uh, from their website. So, so as you can see, the pins on the bottom are not to touch, as um, I mentioned here in red. Why? Because these are used by uh, internally by the microcontroller to uh, to flash, program, and uh, and do all kinds of data exchange internally. So uh, the wiring. Uh, so soldering wires to these and trying to use them would uh, would make your microcontroller not even boot. So don't use these. Otherwise, we can see that the ESP8266 has one uh, a single pin as an ETC uh, input. Unfortunately, yes, it has only one pin as an ETC input. But you can multiplex that. There are so many solutions like people used to to multiplex the uh, the single ADC input and one other thing like it's uh, it's um, it's maximum tolerance is one volt it's not 3.3 like the microcontroller like the SP266 works on 3.3 volts it's ADC uh, ADC's maximum voltage is one uh, one volt but you can find so many tutorials online on how to make that uh, like make any input that's in the range of 3.3 volts uh, tolerant to 1 volt using some uh, voltage di dividers and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, we see that uh, GPU 16 is uh, is marked with a wake uh, word. That uh, that pin is used when when if if you're planning on using the SP266 deep sleep uh, functionality. Pin 16 is used to wake up the uh, the, uh, the microcontroller from deep sleep by pulling down the uh, the reset pin. So, in order to uh, to get your ESP to wake up from deep sleep, you have to uh, to wire uh, GPU 16 to the reset. Otherwise, it will never wake up. So, make sure to remember that. Anyway. So as uh, as I said, you can check this uh, this link. Uh, I'll leave it in the description of this video. You can check this blog post. It's uh, it's so it's so good. Like it's uh, it's very helpful in case you need any more details. So uh, to make to make the SP work, like it doesn't just work like uh, on its own. It needs some external components. And these are uh, four uh, 10k resistors and one capacitor, or even more than one. So 
the minimal wiring diagram for it to work, we need to pull up GPIO zero. Uh, pulling up a, a pin means that we need to wire it to up, which is 3.3 volts through a resistor, usually a 10K resistor. So we pull up GPIO zero through a 10K resistor, we pull up the reset pin, we, we pull up the CHPD, which is uh, the pin that's marked CHPD here is EN or enable pin on the uh, on the actual ESP two six six. So we need to pull, to pull up that too. We need uh, obviously power, so ground GND to ground and VCC to three point three volts. And finally, we need to pull down GPIO fifteen uh, to ground. Pull pull down obviously. And additionally, for uh, stability, like uh, there are some uh, so many stability issues like uh, in the past with the SPS eight two six six, and that corresponds to the choice of the uh, capacitor between its uh, its VCC and GND uh, pins. And uh, this capacitor is called the decoupling capacitor or bypass capacitor. I will link to a video explaining the differences between ceramic and electrolytic capacitors and why they are used as uh, decoupling capacitors and all this, uh, that good stuff. I'm not qualified to talk about that stuff, but there's a very good video, I'll link to it down below. But uh, shortly or briefly, like uh, to, to make your ESP-266 as stable as possible, you need to keep uh, power uh, power wires as short as possible, like a maximum of two centimeters, let's say, and a bigger capacity or as many capacitors as possible. Like here, uh, this diagram is taken from the uh, Arduino Arduino 8266 Arduino core uh, documentation. I'll leave a link to that in uh, in the description. Uh, and they are they are listing a 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor. That's not actually enough for most cases. Like people have reported that uh, the SP266 isn't that stable uh, using that capacitor. I myself I'm using a 220 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor with a couple of uh, 10 picofarad uh, uh, ceramic capacitors. But people have used uh, up to 1,000 microfarad uh, capacitors. So make sure to, as I said, uh, power power wires as short as possible, and capacitors everywhere, guys. Like uh, to obtain the maximum uh, stability. Anyway, as you can see, I'm I'm hiding a part of this graph. Of this wiring diagram, and when I, when I avail it, we find the wiring for the uh, TTL or serial to USB converter that we're gonna use for the uh, programming of the SP266. So, simply 3.3 volts to 3.3 volts, ground to ground, DTR pin to GPIO0, uh, RX and TX to TX and RX of the ESP266, which are pins. Uh, one and three, and the RTS to the reset uh, pin. And here we'll look at real wiring diagram. This uh, chip, this red chip, is the FTDI chip uh, or FTDI serial to USB converter and USB to serial converter. Uh, this is what I used. This is the chip that I used to program my ESP two six six. First of all, make sure that uh, your uh, USB to serial converter is 3.3 volts uh, tolerant or has the 3.3 uh, volt line because you don't want to fry your uh, ESP266 with 5 volts. So if uh, it's like mine and has the uh, the jumper, make sure you, you put it on the 3.3 volt uh, position. Otherwise, make sure that it's 3.3 uh, volts uh, uh, Compatible and put it in 3.3 volts. I can't I can't stress this enough guys like you don't want to fry your ESP board from the first try like uh, Obviously 
Anyway, so Rx to Tx, Tx to Rx, very simple. VCC to VCC and ground to ground, not couldn't be simpler than that. And then we have our reset pin uh, and enable pin pulled up. Our, uh, our uh, GPIO 15 pulled down, as mentioned uh, before, and GPIO 0, it, need, uh, it has to be pulled up to boot for the ESP to boot and has to be pulled down for the ESP to flash or to upload code to the ESP. So, as I mentioned in the previous uh, wiring diagram, you either use DTR and uh, RTS pins of the uh, FTDI chip or if your uh, of your if your USB to serial converter doesn't support uh, doesn't have the TR and RTS you have another option so i have a summary here on uh, on the two options to program uh, to program the ESP266 either the first option uh, that we've discussed already use the TR and RTS pins and just hit upload and it, it will upload uh, directly or uh, if you don't have a DTR or RTS or don't want to use them you can perform the put in flash mode sequence on your own so the SP266 has to uh, has two modes boot mode and flash mode when on boot mode you can't program it like if you try to upload code to it it will raise uh, an error for you it will won't even find the SP266 when it's on in flash mode, you can program it as you want. So, you, how to put it in flash mode? This is done uh, when using the DTR and RTS pins. They uh, they perform this sequence for you to put uh, to uh, to make the ESP to six go between the boot mode and the flash mode. In case you don't have these or want to do it on your own, it's pretty simple. As discussed below, uh, as discussed before, the reset pin is normally pulled high, so you pull that low, even through a wire. Like you simply uh, hook it hooked up to uh, to, G uh, to GND through a wire, or you make a push button to make a reset button. Like it's very useful. In my case, I uh, salvaged uh, a push button from an old mice, an old mouse, and uh, use it as a reset button. Then, while, re while pulling the reset pin low, you pull GPIO 0 low, as we discussed uh, before, GPIO 0 needs to be pulled low to flash, when it's pulled up, it's, it's in boot mode, so we pull GPIO 0 low, then we release, only release G uh, the reset button, or reset pin, if you're not using the button, you just uh, uh, remove the wire you you put uh, between reset and GND, so it's now pulled up. Then you release GPIO zero, and it becomes pulled up also. Also, you can use the button on here, push button on here, and then you upload code. Once your code done uploading, you have to reset the the uh, ESP to six six, and you'll have it uh, running code as intended. So. This is it, guys. I I think I I talked about everything that you have to uh, you need to to work to with the SK266. I'll link uh, to as many resources as I can uh, remember to link in the description. Uh, and thank you for watching. Like and thank you for subscribing. Like we have 24 subscribers on the channel. Like that's insane. Like I didn't even I didn't even consider doing YouTube. Like I was just uploading videos just for fun, just just to see like if I'd get if if I'd get people like seeing the projects that I do and stuff. And having 24 people like subscribe to me, that's huge, guys. So thank you. Otherwise, uh, check the description for any resources, as I said, and uh, I'll now leave you with uh, with the blink example, as always. That's mandatory. Like 
no matter how how big a project uh, big of a project you're working on you have to start with the blink example so uh, yeah thank you guys and see you in the next video i guess bye